Hi. So this video is about building this kit, the Collectronics Proto PSU. It's um, something I designed for myself and I thought it would be quite good, uh, an interesting kit. I'm trying to make it sort of beginner friendly, although not as, be as beginner friendly as um, the speaker kit I made. There's a few more parts and you have to be a little bit more careful about um, getting the components in the right places otherwise it might get a bit hot um, when built it should look a bit like like this it pushes um, power rails into your breadboard so you um, have uh, plus and minus 12 and 5 volts I decided not to go for connecting to these directly um, with these pin headers if you see it's these pin headers showing the micro in the well I can't really um, I decided not to go straight on those rails because I discovered there was a lot of variation between breadboards and um, I wanted to make it as universal as possible so it's designed to push into the first four rows at the top of a breadboard I just find a blank one well, I find it. Here's a totally different breadboard, and it will even connect to this one because it just connects to the first four um, rows each side of a a, a dip um, gap. So, like to simplify, it will also fit in this one, for example, like that, and you can see that you got ground, 12 volts, minus 12 volts, plus 12 volts, and 5 volts. And here we don't even have the rails and we still use it. I can show you a close up with the microscope perhaps. Wrong way. Focus. Manual focus. like that. Anyway, uh, that's that. Um, but it also, it comes with a front panel. Uh, I've just misplaced the front panel. Probably should have made sure I had this to hand. Where did I put it? I put it Somewhere I can't see. I, I, I can't show that right now, but there's pictures on the website you can see. Anyway, this is what the, the kit should look like when you get it. I mean, it's subject to change if, you know, I can't get these packagings anymore. On the back is the bomb for the more experienced of you. It has the reference designators um, in relation in relation to the um, parts you know if you can easily decode these uh, you get a bag of um, hardware parts PCBs wrapped up in tissue paper and the non static parts and um, the static sensitive parts in another bag so that's four bags. Um, now, if you look on the package, there's uh, a URL to my website, and that can give you a more detailed assembly guide, which is shown here in this website here. You should come here. This is what it looks like currently, because I haven't made much stuff. And uh, you click on Proto PSU, and here is the assembly instructions. Uh, at the bottom is downloads and there's an iBOM which is something that KeyCAD produces for you which is a really useful uh, way to see where all the designators are if you need that kind of guide uh, you can change it to be a bit simpler if we just want the front of the board for example we should probably want that Doing different ways of groupings you know 
anyway. How do I get... Where was I? I changed it like that. Hmm. This is grouped by... Yeah, that's per and grouped by designator, so you can do each part. Grouped by designator is probably the best. Anyway, I'll undo the... I'll show you the PCB, so I'll just put this bag aside. Where has it gone? I can actually show you... Just because I've misplaced it. I can actually show you what the... This is what the front... This is the different way of assembling. You can get a front panel. Um, you can set it up to be a module rather than a pushing board. You have to put some parts in in a slightly different way. Uh, we won't be showing that now. Uh, in this board, in this assembly guide, I'll only be showing you the uh, front using the push the breadboard mode because, to be honest, that's the best setup. But I just added this in as a bonus. You get this um, front panel design and if you look let me set up this focus if you look um is this focus yeah if you look this is the top of the board Uh, doesn't have that kind of focus. This is the top of the board. Um, this is where you put all the parts. This is the bottom of the board. You do not put parts on this side except if you're making a front panel version because the DC jack goes there and the LEDs come out on this side there. So you end up with the front panel like this. And the board is on the back. Um, you should be able to see more if you look on the website. But I will not be showing this as an example. I think this is kind of eh, a very niche um, extension of the kit. I think the most useful form of it is actually as a breadboard, push in breadboard device. So let's look at the instructions. Um, I recommend the first thing to do is to put in the capacitors. Um, there are two different sets of capacitors. Um, there is a hundred UF and ten UF, and they look exactly the same. So let's get those. We take the the uh, passives back. Just pull those out. Maybe you want to put them in a little tray. I think I might put them in a little tray. You just want to be careful that they don't roll off. Ready lost apart. Um, I need some solder. Soldering iron. This is my one. Now, we want to put in 10 UF and 100 UF. Now you see the um, 
10 UFs are C6, 7 and 9. And they're marked quite clearly on the board. Where am I? C C9, C6, and apparently C7 is up there. If you go that way, over there. Now, make sure you do not get confused between the 100 microfarad and the 10 microfarad part. If you see, on the package, this one says 100 microfarads, that's 100 and a little u and an f. This one says 10 microfarad and it looks exactly the same, except for it says 10 microfarads. Okay, so we want to make sure we have the three 10 microfarad parts. Guessing it's these three. No, nope, that's a hundred. 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 Ten. Ten. Okay. I'm going to put them in C. Six, seven, and nine. Now, watch out. There it is. A polarity. The square Sorry I had a phone call. Um where was I? There's a positive There's a positive symbol here, you see, and that means this pad is positive. If you look at the capacitor, it has a short leg and a long leg. The short is negative, the long is positive. If you see, also, there's a negative stripe for where the negative side is. So we just put those in. Be absolutely sure to get these right, because you can get strange failures if you don't get them the right way around. If you're not totally sure they're in the right way around, refer to the images on the website. You should be able to see which way around they are on the board. Sorry, I'm back. Um, so, let's solder those three in. If you want to double check that they are right, you can look at this first stage and see roughly what they would look like. Actually, you know what, let's put also the 100 microfarads in at the same time. So, like this. So, the rest of these cans, these electrolytic capacitors, are the 100 microfarads ones that we were talking about earlier. And they go in the highlighted spots. Double check polarity. Short leg is negative. Long leg is positive. Okay. OK. 
go. Let's dissolve it. Soldering iron might look expensive, but it's actually a clone that you can buy off AliExpress. But you don't need anything even that fancy. You could. As long as your solder flows. That's all you need to know. Cut these off. This because it's gone. Now, if you wanted to make the front panel version, you can follow these instructions my this video up to a certain point and I'll point out when you want to stop and do something slightly different. Just push those aside. So there are the capacitors. Now the next stage is to put in the resistors. So start with the eleven Ks. That's the largest it should be the largest pack of resistors if you look the code is where are we looking brown brown black red so that's one one zero 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 which is eleven and three zero so that's eleven thousand ohms and they go in Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, two, R two. This is where you have to be careful. R two, R four, R6 R7 R8 Hmm. Oh, I missed our five. It's quite easy to know where these are actually because most of them are actually for driving the LEDs. There's just one that's for the chip. And then the next two resistors are two different values. They are R1, which is 220 micro ohms, which is quite an unusual value, which might actually change. Let's not talk about that now. So it's 2, 2, and silver, which, no, it's 0, 2, 2. So that's 0, 2, 2. And then silver, which means 0.1, I think. Sorry, I need to remember. I can't remember. Anyway, it's the silver one. And that's R1.
then the last one is 1k, which is R3. And 1k is... There's my little pointer. 1k is brown, brown, black, black, brown. So that's 1, 0, 0, 0. Because the brown means 1, 0. That goes in R3. And then we solder all those up. Make sure the solder flows onto the pad and around the leads. Okay, now the next stage is putting in the capacitors and the polyfuses. Now these look quite similar. But these are polyfuses, they're not actually capacitors. The way they work is they, um, they, uh, go high resistance when too much heat when too much current passes through them um, they're not ideal as in they won't instantly switch off if you slightly exceed the power but they will they will definitely um, save you if the uh, um, you have a short across one of the rails it also helps to protect the um, inverting regulator that gives us minus 12 volts and if you see it's F1 and F2 there's no polarity for them so put them in whatever way around you want F1 and F2 and then the next thing is this tiny multi-layer ceramic capacitor get the focus it's 221 for 220 microfarads which is C uh, sorry not microfarads two, 220 puffs 220 picofarads so that goes in C2 no polarity this time either goes there. We'll solder those in. Okay, now the next stage is put in the regulators. So we're going to need the other bag, which is the um, sem bag that has all the semiconductors in it. And these big three-legged parts are the regulators. 
Oh, where's the other two? There. Now, they might look the same, but they actually have different values. If you look closely, this one says 7912. That is U3. You see there? So that needs to go in here. You can tell which way around it goes because on the back um, it has a sort of the image of the tabs. Now what's this one? This one is 7812 which is U2. Which goes here. Bend the legs out. And then the next one is 7805, which is U4. It's here. Now these three linear regulators take in the 15 volts, one of them takes the 15 volts down to 12 volts, then the, the 12 volts gets fed into the 5 volts and um, creates 5 volts, and then the 15 volts goes into the switching inverter which produces minus 15 and this minus, this, um, minus 12 volt regulator creates a minus 12 volts. So we have a tiny bit of linear regulating between in front of each rail. Hopefully to smooth that out. I'm not sure how effective it is because they're really designed for mains. Um, 50, 60 hertz mains and switching frequency is actually in the kilohertz but it seems to work quite well I've designed a few circuits on breadboards using this and it works well enough for my purposes Go. you can bend these back and forwards if you want and I actually designed this so that if you did actually want to there's not a ton of space like you can't put on a classic heat sink but um, you might be able to put on bits of metal or whatever to try and improve the, the uh, heat performance of the regulators now the next stage is putting in the sockets now there are reference designators for this, but actually it's quite obvious, so you shouldn't really need them. We need the third bag, which is the hardware bag. And we should have the socket for the dip in the piece of foam from the uh, semiconductor's bag. Now be careful here. The the, if I show you the this does have a, a way round the pin one is square and there's a little dip showing where the front is now the socket also has this see there's a little, it's quite hard to show in the camera because it's black on black there's a little dip at the top there, so the dip has to match the direction like this. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? See how the dip matches. Now, this socket is just going to fall out if you turn it over, so I recommend putting your finger on it like this, flipping it round, and then very gently bending one, uh, 
one uh, pin there and one pin on the other side, just with your fingernail. And then it won't fall out. You can solder it. We'll just solder this before we get onto the other sockets. I'll show you close up. See how I have bent that little pin over. Zoom up. Quite hard to see because it's metallic. Anyway, I'll solder it. Oh, well, there's also the diode. Oops. I just realised I missed on the previous stage the diode. It doesn't really matter what order this stuff goes in, but I'll, I'll show you the diode. The diode looks like this. Um, if you look on the diode, there's a stripe. The stripe is the um, cathode and the non-stripe is the anode. And if you look on the board, D1 and D2, if we go to the I bomb, are here. And let's show D1. Whoop, whoop, whoop. See, there's a thick side and a non thick side. So the thick stripe goes to the thick end. So I'll put those in. Sorry, I missed that stage out. Should have been done with the regulators. To be honest, it doesn't quite matter how you do the order. The order of this building is just to sort of help make it easier to get certain parts in. But with a bit of fiddling, you could really do anything in any order. The trickiest thing would be getting the capacitor in after you put the socket in because it's very close. We'll solder those. There we go. Now the next stage is where we were, which is the socket, we're putting in the inductor too. The inductor is this big fat part here. It might be, it's not really marked, but it's quite obvious what it is. It doesn't have a polarity that we care about. Stick it in there, bend the legs out, solder it. Next. Ah. Next, we want to put in the sockets, the uh, Murac 16 pin power sockets. Um, these have a polarity. If you look, there's a pin one is marked with a triangle and the key is marked as well and all you need to do really is make sure the key is the correct way round and the connector actually has if you look closely a little triangle on it see that yeah so the triangle goes where the triangle is on the board. Now we can't really bend these pins because they're quite chunky. So the best way to do them, well my way of doing them, you could use blue tack if you wanted to. I hear people use that. 
I just hold it in, making sure I'm not touching the pin I'm about to solder. And then I get a bit of solder on my soldering iron, and I tab it onto one of the pins, tab it on the other end. That might be a bit advanced if you're new to soldering. I suggest maybe also um, using the blue tack method, which is where you just push it down onto a big ball of blue tack and solder it in place. I always suggest, no matter what method you're using, just soldering a couple of pins first on each end, just one pin at one end, one pin at the other end, and then just double checking that the socket is seated fully, and if it's not you can just push down and melt like this. You might hear a little clicking sound, it pushes in, anyway, that's that. Double check you've got the headers on properly. You you would only put these you would put these headers on even if you were doing the front panel configuration. So don't worry. I'll tell you exactly when you need to stop for the for if you're making the front panel mode. Which I think is after the next component. Takes a bit of time doing 16 times 2 pins. There we go. Now that's mostly done. Now the next thing to do is put in this little header. This is so you can um, tie in power through the screw terminals instead of having to use a DC jack because it can be quite hard to find those good if you're connecting it to a power supply. Now this is mega loose. There's no way that um, this will hold in. So you're either using blue tack or your finger, try not to touch anything hot, tab it in. Like that. Make sure the actual sockets are facing outwards, like that. If you can see I made sure the sockets are facing outwards. That's the screw terminals. Now, that this is the point where the two different configurations diverge. If you want to do the front panel, you would now flip it over, and this is how it's going to be mounted. You see, like this. This is how it's going to be mounted, and you would have the. I can put the parts in just to show. I won't solder them because I'm doing the other way. You put the jack, the DC jack in this side. This holds in, which is quite nice. And you put the LEDs this side as well. Like that. I recommend sticking these spaces on and screwing the front panel on before soldering anything because then you can get it all configured nicely to the front. But I'm not going to show that in this video. Um, I'm afraid that's something you have to work out yourself. Because I'm only showing this way in the tutorial video. So, now we put in the LEDs and the DC socket. So for the breadboard version, we put it this way around and we put the socket in like this. Now don't worry, the pins are made so it can go on both sides, but luckily it's asymmetric, so if you're on the top, it'll only fit in one way around, which is this way, like that, and what else do we need? We'll just do this, we'll just solder the socket first, make sure it's pushed in nicely just tight enough that you don't have to worry about holding it down. Solder it in. Now the LEDs, I recommend just pushing them in. 
the LEDs are polarized. Uh, this LED doesn't actually have a marking on it to show whether positive and negative. The negative, the cathode, is the one with the bucket on it. If you look really closely, there's a bucket. Anyway, you can tell just by looking at the other end. There's a short leg. And it even says it on the bottom of the board as a guide, if you look. Anyway, you have to trust me, it says here, short leg. But you want to do it on this side, the top side. So we do the short leg, where the square pad is. There we go. Solder it. Seems to have a silk screen error here. It's not error, but it's got plus and negative twice. It's correct, but it's just uh, looks a bit strange. I'm sure, that will disappear on future. Visions. Okay, that is all the parts in. The only thing left to do is putting in the chip, which should still be in the foam. If you look, it should say, whoop, you can't see the, the chip marking. says UTC MC3406. The great thing about this chip, which is one of the only few great things about this chip, is that it's very ubiquitous and cheap and in dip. You can use one of these tools to straighten the legs or you can just do it on the bench. Be really careful not to fold over any legs when you're placing it in. Go. Now that should work. Now be super careful with this board because if you get any values wrong, especially if you get the resistors um, as part of the switching circuit and um, voltage divider circuit for the switching circuit, is you could end up with uh, a little bit of heat, let's say you might need to buy a new chip. Um, so go back, go through the back through the instructions and just double qu and quadruple check that everything's the correct way around, the right values in the right locations. If you don't, if you can't work out the resistor colors because they can be a bit strange sometimes, like red looks like brown. <laughs> Use a multimeter to double check. Uh, I'm gonna check it by just using the terminals, you could use uh, a DC jack too with 15 volts power supply, tip positive. I am just going to use two headers. Fifteen volts. I'll do a red. And ground I'll do as a black. Now this can be a little bit uh, nervous at the moment. You can do a, you can do a quick check with a multimeter.
on con continuity mode. Double check that there's no short. You might get a little blip. The capacitor charging up. That's good. Double check for shorts on the bottom. Now, I'm using a bench power saw. You might not have this. If you're just using a brick, like a power brick, it can be a little bit trickier. Luckily, there's a diode, so if you do get the power the wrong way around, you're not going to have any catastrophic issues. I'm using a bench power slide, which is ideal. If you've got one, use it. Set it to 15 volts. Set it to current limit, but not too low, because you, you can end up... Um, fighting the regulation of the power supply. I reckon maybe like half an amp, maybe more. Let's try half an amp and I'll, we'll see. It's a good test. Uh, plug it in. Now we need to be able to test if it's working. So the ideal thing is get a multimeter you always need a multimeter for doing electronics. So I recommend buying one. Connect to ground. Minus 12 is the best one to check with. So it's a volts, 20 volts DC. Turn it on. I might have a fault here. Be good if we do, that we can see. Seems pretty good. Seem like quite a lot of current, so I'm just going to double check the polarity of the capacitors. Positive, positive. No, nope, that seems good. Perfect. Do that again. Red on minus 12, black on ground. Get minus 12. Back on ground. Five volts. Twelve volts. Perfect. Now I've realised I've missed another stage out, which is we don't have the pins in for the breadboard. I recommend getting a breadboard. Where's that green one gone? I recommend getting a breadboard, getting the pins, pushing them into the breadboard first. You don't have to do this but it helps make sure it's properly aligned. And holding and pushing it over. You see how it makes sure it's all aligned. You probably want to do a little tab Blob of solder just to hold it all in, make sure it's flat, and solder it up. There we go, and that's it built. Now, I might do another video showing uh, different uh, me building something in this. But basically, that's the run through of how to build it. See, it looks exactly like this one, which is one we built already. Thank you very much. Bye.